All right, guys, so hopefully you just came from watching our little squat session, giving you guys a lot of cool tips for beginners, intermediates, and even a great reminder for advanced athletes. We got my man Anthony Deal in the house. He's a pro strong man, bodybuilder, nutrition coach, strength coach, does it all. Very similar to kind of what I do, which is really cool that we connect and we think very alike. Uh, but he's also a phenomenal presser. I'm talking like strict press, push press, just a freaking animal uh, with those. So I want him to kind of go over all the basics, tips and tricks of a log. Right, straw man's growing. This is a big implement in the sport, one of my favorites. Uh, so I'm here to learn as well as him just kind of share, you know, anything about it, uh, the things to do, not to do, and how to be an efficient log queen oppressor. Yeah, uh, so log is one of my favorites. Uh, I've always been a better presser than a deadlifter, probably because of the years I spent early on, uh, you know, training like an idiot and just doing bench press and curls every day. Uh, but anyways, so log's a lot of fun. The first thing I do is I focus on my feet and my setup. So personally for me, I want to keep my feet planted at all times. So from here, my feet don't move. I'm not coming up on my heels. I'm not screwing around up here. So I like to find where I'm comfortable. And for me, I have my toes slightly angled out towards these posts. Uh, you'll also notice that I have the log tilted uh, angled away from me. The reason for that is so that when I get up here, it puts me in a better and more efficient position. So when I go to clean it, I'm just gonna deadlift it up, keep that angled away, and then I'm gonna sit down behind it. So see how my elbows and shoulders, my elbows are really high. This log is pinned against my sternum, okay? So when I stand up, I'm gonna squeeze my lats into the log to keep it pinned here and just whoop. And now I'm gonna break the pressure to press. Elbows high, my chin is back. And then when I dip, I like to think of putting my knees over my pinky toe. So a lot of times with the log, it's 12 inches, right? People will get here and they will struggle because when they dip, their knees come forward. When my knees come forward like this, you can watch my elbows, they tip forward. That log's 12 inches away. And every time I dip forward like that, it's moving farther away from the center of mass of my body and it's getting harder. It's just like a deadlift when you go to pool, if it drifts out in front of you, it's gonna get harder, it's gonna be less efficient. So when I dip, I wanna make sure that I'm staying completely upright, completely vertical. So I think of taking my knees, driving them out over my pinky toes, and drive it up and my head through. That's the basics of how I clean and press the log. Yeah, super, super awesome. I think we agree basically on everything. One thing I want you to talk about, which is a, a mistake I used to make all the time, is not to power clean the log, and it's more of that rolling up motion. Really, it's not necessarily uh, static, but we're really keeping a lot more control uh, than a power clean. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll see, or power clean, or um, if you're really new at it, a lot of people try to reverse curl the yeah, log. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they'll just, they'll, they'll have the handle set here like this, They'll stand up straight. And they don't, a lot of people don't even know what to do here. And you'll see a lot of new lifters doing this and there's all sorts of space between the log and their body. And they just got them like, oh, trying to get it up there like that. Again, that can work at first, but it's super inefficient and it's gonna, it's going to derail you really fast. So that's why I angle these away. I get behind and I pin it. This is just a front squat. And what I think of is as my hips are rising, I'm trying to rotate my elbows. I want to put them out towards him. So. Now I'm in a good position. Versus just trying to use my hips to throw it up. Do you, Does that yeah, make sense? Yeah, yeah, totally. And that was the one mistake. I came from an Olympic lifting background, so I was like power cleaning like 300 pound logs, which is just very non efficient whatsoever. <laughs> uh, but then I, I realized that when I hug it tight, get that good roll, uh, one, it was way more efficient. Two, I was I started putting on like I said in the other video a lot of muscle man like you're working it's basically the same thing almost as like a flexion row uh, which is something I really like but you're getting the erectors the, uh, the rhomboids everything the lats involved uh, and we talked about before you, you never see a straw man at, at a high level with a small back so that's essential I find with beginners do you have any tips on pressing that you ever find with people like that they need to tidy up when they press um, so sometimes you'll see people they're not used to the weight in this position. Again, why I do a lot of front squats, because I want to be comfortable here. If I'm comfortable here with a 500 pound front squat, well, when I get a 300 pound log, that's 200 pounds off. Mm -hmm. So a lot of heavy front squats, but a lot of times their elbows will drop down. And again, it's a 12 inch log. So if your elbows are here, that log is out here. Your center of mass is here. So this is why you want to be tilted back, elbows high. I like to think about pointing my elbows towards that opposite wall. So I'm here. And I'm keeping that center of that log over the center mass. 
and then press up and head through. A lot of people will press up and get stuck here and their head's way back here and they're fighting to do that. By driving your head through, it helps you extend and get your arms back. So is your upper body slightly leaning back? Absolutely. Okay, so you do find that. Yeah. Yes. Once again, it's gonna help build a bigger upper back. Um, so that's kind of the basics of the log. We have an empty log here. What I'm gonna have uh, DK do is kind of just get some light work in with the log, nothing crazy, but I want Anthony to kind of uh, coach him a little bit so you guys can see what it looks like going through the movement itself. I obviously can't because my bicep is still recovering and it's probably gonna be the smart thing to do. So I'm here just kind of watching and learning. Um, so we'll just put on something comfortable for DK, nothing crazy. DK's training like a madman right now. There's no need to do anything nuts. Um, but you know, when we have guys like this in here, it's great for our athletes to kind of learn, get some pointers, see some other things that potentially could help him down the road. So uh, let's kick it off to that. There you go, pin that to DK's press has come a very long way. He's made a lot of improvements on his press, uh, strict press and push press. So I'm excited for him to really dial in the technique. And I feel like there's definitely a 400 plus pound log can impress in the tank. Just from watching you do like your, the actual press portion, I don't know that I would change anything really. Yeah, it's I feel like it's probably my dip. Uh, your knees track pretty well. Really? Now I don't know if you have some psychological something going on with your knee. Injury. Well, no, because I noticed back when he switched up my push pressing, because I like before my push presses were like, you know, knees straight forward. Right. right. And he said about he had me, you know, knees out, open the yep. hips. Yep. And now anytime I press, I focus on that because I know with uh, my comp coming up with Circus, he wants me to focus on actually like opening the hips sure. and using the explosive power. Well, I mean, just watching you just now, it's a lighter weight, but your elbows didn't move. It was a perfect elevator. That's what you want, like just straight up and down. You, if, you're, if you're doing this, now we have a problem. Yeah. Now, that might reveal itself as it gets heavier, yeah. but yeah, just drilling that. You brought something up earlier, you brought it up, and I totally agree with it for strength sports. You can do three sets of 10 for hypertrophy if you're controlling the weight, whatever. Um, for strength, I don't like to do that either because what I like to do personally is when I'm working with lower percentages, I like to do something like 12 sets of two, 10 sets of three, um, because you're drilling motor pattern recruitment. Yeah. So if you do three sets of 10 and with a shitty form, now you're just drilling poor technique versus you do, you do a double at 60%, um, then you can watch it back and go, okay, well now I need to work on this. Do another two reps, drill that. Okay, well now I need to work on this. And you're refining that motor pattern movement versus doing 10 reps with a terrible pattern and reinforcing this and terrible you, technique. When you're doing like 10 sets of two where like once you figure out whatever you need to fix, you'll end up with, let's just say six doubles with the like perfect form that you want. Right, yeah, I mean, that's the And like you're that, still getting the volume in, it's just broken down to, uh, work with your fatigue levels better. Absolutely, and we'll, he talked about how we're, the, your main audience is beginner to intermediate. Um, big mistake that a lot of young guys make that I made is not taking your weight seriously until it got to work sets. And if you notice, we're looking at technique on an empty log, and now with light weight, every rep counts because every rep is driving uh, that motor pattern learning. And so, view your warm-ups as intently as you would a one rep max because you're drilling habits and habits are what are going to drive that technique later on when the weight gets heavy so you know don't just grab the log and throw it around and then get serious when it's time to put on working weight hey when we're focused on log and there's an empty log drill it and make sure everything's perfect and slowly add weight and do that every time and you're gonna see a ton more progress coming out with log in there. How do you normally go about uh, programming your log with your training? Depends, is it a one rep max or are we pressing for reps? Uh, part of push, I you guess. can pick, you can pick either, either or. Like is it something, I mean more in terms of like frequency, like are you pressing at least 
every week? Will you just do a clean and press on one day with a log and then switch to other variations? Or do you try to keep the log, you know, your staple for all your pressing movements throughout the like? Personally, I like to press twice a week. I've done sometimes three times a week because pressing doesn't demand as much as deadlifting or say yoke or farmer's carries, something like that. So you can recover a lot. Uh, if I'm pressing twice a week, you know, and I have a log coming up in my competition, I will do log every week, but I will change up variations. So I'm a big fan of um, making sure I'm practicing my strict press. I neglected my strict press for a lot of years. Um, and I think a lot of people really miss out on some progress there when they do that. Um, so, you know, I will, I'll push press with the log, I'll strict press with the log, I'll push press with a cambered bar. I love push pressing with the cambered bar, incline bench with the cambered bar because of the instability. Um, so yeah, if I'm training for a log and there's, it's in a competition, I'm going to train it. Now, if it's a log that, you know, I have a decent press, so if it's part of a medley and it's, you know, 70% of my max, I might hit it every other week and just mm -hmm. stay conditioned. Gotcha. But yeah, it really depends what it is. Is it a max log? Is it a medley? Is it, you know, for reps? Is it clean and press every rep? Um, I have a very strong Viper press. so. Um, I'm not very good at clean once and press away, so I'll practice that all the time. Okay. Um, I get a lot of my tightness from the clean. Hmm. So a lot of times when I get up here, I can press for a while and then I start to lose some of that. So I practice that a lot. Gotcha, cool, cool. Come on. noticed it but like I watched this knee here you literally like wiggled it back out yeah. for the next rep it's like you you realize what you did uh, that's why I said one more I just want to see if you stayed there you did right? yeah, I felt I felt it in my head I'm like oh shit and that's when you said about doing one more but your press was your press was ridiculous so yeah for you it's working just the efficiency of that yeah. clean if you can get that clean to be where it's just cake and not really even a part of the equation, then you can just focus on the press. Yeah. So what does he have to work on to clean your stand? Um, so you're still rocking a little bit. So you're up here. You do this sort of like, like you're trying to like get your hips. Up. Yeah, trying trying to load a little bit. So you so when you clean it like when you lap it, it's literally just. Yeah, I just, I just when I get here, you'll see it. I just. I'm just Forcing my hips through. You're literally bringing it, popping them through. I'm popping them through, and like I know it sounds silly, but I try to time my elbows and my hips to go at the same time. To go at the same time, so it's like this. Um, I need to pay attention next time. But what's your front squat stance compared to your log press stance? Because this is where pause front squats might help you, like long ass pause front squats, eliminate all strength reflex. Because if you can get comfortable down here yeah. with the heavy front squat, then you can just explode right up. You won't feel the need to lean back and load. Well, that's the thing, like with front squats, like, I mean, I'm not in, been in a year of like just heavy strength, so like you guys said, joints are shit. So it depends, like, if my hips are feeling good, I'll like go a little narrower. Sure. But if my hips are shitty, I'll have to go wider just, just so, like, so they feel good. I'll go whatever stance feels best that day. Do you, do you uh, clean the log in the same stance as your deadlift, or is it different? Okay. So my deadlift, my deadlift is like right here, and my log's a little wider. Okay. My log is right here. Yeah, my wife's squat is gotcha. my, gotcha. my deadlift stance. The reason I say that is I just feel like, and even if you had to lighten the weight, because you can rock right now, it's not a big deal. Yeah. But your glutes and your hamstrings are much more powerful than your upper back. So when you're getting to max weight and you try to rock, you rock all you're strong. doing is that log is going to come out from yeah. you because you're depending on your upper back to keep it tight. And when you rock like this, it's just falling forward. Yeah. So you can develop your hamstrings and glutes a hell of a lot faster. So if you can keep this tight position here and just stand up and drive through. 
going to make it more efficient, I think. So, and you... Does that make sense, what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, no, yeah. So when you clean, you're cleaning right in your pressing stance right away. Yeah, yeah, like, I don't you know, stances like, Once at you all. get it up top, you don't adjust your feet or anything? Nope, nope, I breathe down here on the pick and I breathe in my lap. And then I'm right up and I don't want, I don't want my feet freaking loose. So, I'm... <laughs> Again, that comes from, I just basically view this as I'm pinning this to my, you know, chest with my lats, rhomboids, traps, all that, and just front squatting it up, throwing my elbows. Yeah, that's, like that. yeah. that's how I view it. Let's try to have you work on that, DK. Let's pan the camera over to Lyndon, because I don't know what the hell we got going on. Try to be like discreet yeah. over here, <laughs> 60 pounds of change. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some competitions allow grip shirts, some won't. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. If they don't allow them, by the way, you can wear a grip shirt underneath your comp t shirt, it still works. Oh, yeah. really? Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah, because I guess it grabs it's gonna catch the t shirt. It. It's going to grab it. But yeah, that, uh, that's, my, that's my go to. But I also think, because like, before I would always clean it in a, like a narrow stance, get it to the top here, adjust yeah. my feet to my press. So, some of the elite pressers do that. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Um, it's whatever's comfortable for you. Whatever's comfortable for you. The same thing goes with that angle of the handles. Um, depends on your arm length, too. Yeah. So some people need a more extreme tilt away. It shouldn't be tilted backwards, uh, for sure. But, I mean, that's you gotta play around with it, so, you know. I just feel like tilting it forward, it, the, the lift, like, the lift of the lap is easier. Yeah. Just because like the angle of your wrist and all that. And I mean, it's, and it's a it's neutral slide, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you just yeah. pull it straight up. It's just an RDL right into your lap. You because I feel right like when you angle it, you're gonna have your wrist closer to your body where you just, you know, pick it just straight like this. It, like you're out far. You're out there. farther, it's harder there, to engage yeah. your eyes. Yeah, well, because if you notice, when I set up, one of the things I did is I rocked my hips back. It's like, because I could pick it here, but I just, I always do this little motion to get set on the back of my heels. And I like to squeeze my triceps as hard as possible, because if you squeeze your triceps as hard as you possibly can, you're left naturally. So instead of just being passive and kind of just hanging on to it, straight up. But, I mean, some of the really the great pressers, uh, Terry Rady is a good presser in the 105, but he cleans ridiculously narrow, gets it here, and press it. Yeah. And there's a lot of guys that do that. Because so, I've noticed, uh, the guys that, that do do that, I've noticed it's just, they'll get it up and they'll just move one foot. Right. Because my thing is I'm always like, boom, boom. Correct. You just want to be a technician and get to the point where your routine is the same every yeah, time. every rep. Even every with your front squat, you're talking about your knee. Maybe you get to a place where you practice it on lighter weights where you plant that weak knee, the insecure knee yeah. first. And that stays, and move the other one to match that. Yeah, because yeah, I'm always, gonna, I'm always moving like my. You know, figure out where you need to go. It's not my like my right leg is my dominant leg, but I always, you know, it's up, and then I go back left. Yeah. And then the surgery. That, but that, that last clean would look great. So if you just drill that form, you don't need to do yeah. that rocking motion. It's going to be a lot more efficient long term. Yeah, definitely like the clean. And even like the pick itself, because I was standing there figuring out where I'm going to press from, and I just like stayed in that stance. Yeah. And it, it, everything felt better. I mean, if you pick it up just straight, at some point you're going to have to fight with this log to get in the right position. Yeah. Whereas if you can nail down that position from the floor, then there's no fighting. You just go and you press. And I always like, I like to press pretty much as soon as I'm in this position because 
the longer you're holding the weight yeah. here, it's like a it's like a life bar in a video game. You're just losing. Weight. Yeah. And so you see people doing this number and breathe in and stepping all over the place and really start. You're just losing power. Every half a second that passes, it's just going down. So, because like if you clean it like this, okay, now it's behind me. And now I gotta sit here and fight to get my position. Or if I clean here, well, now I'm, you know, I gotta sit there and fight to get in the right position. So if you just nail it down, like I said, it's gonna be a little different for everybody. Some people only a slight angle, other people need a really steep one. Just find what works for you and drill that and be a technician. Start from the warm ups and then just have this pattern. That's just how you press. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, are we wrong? Mm -hmm. All right, guys, yeah, honestly, I think we covered everything you could probably cover with a log right now, uh, especially a lot of the beginner uh, fundamentals, as well as some stuff that can transfer over to intermediate lifters, advanced lifters for me. You know, my brain's kind of learning some things right now, which is cool. Uh, DK, just fine tuning things. And uh, basically the biggest thing you know, you can take away from this, uh, just like Anthony was saying, is be a technician. Figure out what works for you and start instilling that early on. Uh, and just try to get rid of all the thinking that could potentially happen when you're doing the lift and set up properly so a lot of that stuff is already taken care of uh but just want to say thanks dude for getting out here teaching us some lock stuff he's, he's got a crazy ass press like he presses 400 pounds uh pretty regularly uh which we'll put some videos or something like that from his instagram here um and you know i for sure see a 400 plus pound log he's going for like the world record as a 105 probably when you get back to strongman you know, for, yeah, if, for this. If Camby hasn't taken it today and set it <laughs> sky high, if he sets it at 4.30 or something so stupid. So you make you train harder. Exactly yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Goodness gracious. Um, but yeah, I think, I think we, DK got some points. You know, I learned something. You know, he's here helping us out. So really cool. So guys, obviously make sure you're following Anthony. We'll put his links obviously below in the description. Uh, check him out. He does coaching, programming, all kind of stuff, nutrition. So if you guys want, go check out his services. Use him as a coach. Awesome dude. Very knowledgeable. Been in sport for a long time. Uh, so he knows what he's talking about. And hopefully you guys now know what this thing is. If you see it in your gym and you didn't have an idea, uh, or if you are using it, how to make yourself more efficient in the movement itself. So stay a lean, mean, strike machine. See you guys next time. Peace.